The Burj Khalifa rises 828 meters above Dubai, dwarfing every cathedral and castle Europe ever built. Yet in all of Europe, no tower even breaks 500 meters. Paris, Rome, Berlin, cities that conquered continents can't conquer the sky. In London, clay so soft it swallows skyscraper foundations forces engineers to drill 55-meter deep piles just to stop buildings from sinking. In Athens, a single view of the Parthenon keeps towers capped at 103 meters. While Asia races upward with steel and glass titans, Europe seems frozen in time. Is it nostalgia? Impossible soil? or hidden forces that keep Europe's skylines forever short? What stops a continent of innovation from ever reaching the clouds? To understand Europe's unique skyline, one must look to its past. Unlike many newer cities that rapidly expanded, European urban centers carry centuries of history. After the devastating Second World War, cities chose to preserve their historic character. Since the 1970s, urban planners have protected historic areas, designating Old Town Islands for preservation, as seen in Vienna. This aimed to protect the city's identity and continuity with the past. This commitment was cemented by Brusselization. In the 1960s and 70s, Brussels saw rapid, uncontrolled modernization demolishing historic buildings for new high-rises. These structures were criticized for their jarring style and negative impact on Brussels' historic character. This sparked public outrage, leading directly to stricter building regulations across Europe. This historical event transformed cultural preference into restrictive urban planning policy, making skyscraper development politically and socially contentious. This sentiment directly shaped today's building height laws. Many cities have strict rules. Athens, for instance, generally limits buildings to 12 floors, about 103 meters for the Athens Tower, to preserve Parthenon views. Central Rome prohibits buildings from surpassing the 136-meter dome of St. Peter's Basilica. These legally binding rules effectively prevent modern towers from overshadowing cherished heritage. But a deeper look reveals that even if the rules allowed, the very ground beneath these cities presents a monumental engineering challenge. London, for instance, sits on squishy clay and gravels, not solid bedrock, supporting a tower weighing hundreds of thousands of metric tons like the Empire State Building at 350,000 metric tons or a typical 50-story skyscraper at 250,000 metric tons on such soft ground requires deep, specialized piles. These piles extend 30 to 100 meters down, often relying on friction with the soil. For perspective, London underground tunnels typically run at 24 meters deep, with some reaching 67 meters, and the Shards Foundation piles extend 55 meters into the ground. Berlin faces marshy, sandy soil and a high groundwater level. Engineers must build massive, waterproof concrete troughs up to 40 meters deep, supported by huge board piles 1.2 meters wide to stabilize structures. Paris requires detailed ground investigations up to 80 meters deep to ensure stability and prevent settlement of surrounding structures. The specific geological conditions of many historic European cities, combined with their dense underground infrastructure, transform deep foundation challenges into exponentially more complex and costly engineering feats. The ground beneath is a maze of existing infrastructure, old sewers, subway lines, and even unexploded World War II bombs in London that engineers must carefully navigate. This necessitates highly specialized, expensive, and time-consuming solutions, resulting in higher construction costs and longer timelines, making skyscraper projects less attractive. As buildings grow taller, they act like giant sails, swaying under strong winds, which causes discomfort and stresses the structure. 
Engineers must design buildings to resist these wind loads, dynamic forces causing large vibrations. To counter this, engineers employ clever strategies. Shaping buildings with tapering or setback sections can reduce wind forces. Another solution is a tuned mass damper, a giant, heavy weight, sometimes hundreds of metric tons, installed near the top. In Rome's 155-meter Uroski Tower, the top three technical floors function as the mass for such a system, separated by shock absorbers. When wind pushes the building, the damper moves oppositely, absorbing energy and stabilizing the structure. While Europe also has seismic regions requiring earthquake design following Eurocode 8, wind remains a more universal challenge for its tall buildings. Tuned mass dampers are a global solution, but their use in Europe is particularly critical. The continent's urban fabric often prevents ideal aerodynamic shaping of new skyscrapers. Dense, historically preserved environments mean new sites are constrained, limiting architects' ability to design forms that naturally shed wind. This external constraint forces engineers to rely more heavily on complex internal damping systems to manage vibrations and ensure comfort. This adds another layer of technical complexity and cost. Additionally, a fire in a skyscraper presents immense engineering challenges for evacuation and firefighting. In Germany, a building is a high-rise if just one floor is over 22 meters above ground. This height is critical because it is the approximate maximum reach of fire ladders, triggering strict regulations beyond it. Buildings taller than 30 meters, roughly 8 to 10 floors, typically require a dedicated fire brigade elevator. Firefighters carrying 20 to 30 kilograms of equipment would find climbing 50 meters of stairs nearly impossible without it. Tall buildings also need dry and wet risers, special pipes, sometimes with booster pumps to deliver water to higher floors, as standard hoses cannot reach. Europe's stringent fire safety regulations, like Germany's 22-meter high-rise definition, create a lower practical height threshold for complex and costly engineering requirements. Even moderately tall buildings trigger expensive high-rise demands, disproportionately increasing complexity and cost. Delivering massive construction materials to a skyscraper site in bustling European cities like London, Paris, or Berlin is another logistical nightmare. These ancient cities have narrow, winding streets, limited access, and minimal space for staging materials. Trucks face severe traffic and parking restrictions, making last-mile deliveries, the final leg to the site, incredibly expensive and time-consuming, sometimes over half the total delivery cost. On-site, limited space due to high land prices means deliveries must be precisely just in time to avoid bottlenecks at loading docks. A single small elevator in a multi-floor building can cause long waits, slowing work significantly. Night construction, while reducing traffic, adds complexity as suppliers may be closed. These challenges lead to higher costs and longer timelines. Also, a skyscraper's structure, typically reinforced concrete and steel, must carry immense vertical loads, the building's weight plus its contents. It also resists powerful lateral loads from wind and, in some regions, earthquakes. This demands robust columns and beams at the base, supporting every floor above. As height increases, more space is needed for structural elements, elevators, and stairwells. Up to a quarter of a high-rise's footprint can be dedicated to these core systems, reducing usable area and impacting profitability. Engineers balance strength, weight, and space, often using advanced computer models to test designs against extreme forces. Beyond these incredible technical and engineering feats, other powerful factors also play a huge role in Europe's grounded skyline. Building a skyscraper is incredibly expensive, with costs increasing exponentially with height. Taller buildings consistently cost more per square meter to build due to larger core structures, complex mechanical systems, and specialized equipment. 
Despite costly European land, these added construction and operational expenses, plus complex regulations and logistical hurdles, often make lower, denser buildings more practical and profitable. Beyond economics, many Europeans prefer human-scale buildings that blend in. Tall building proposals often face strong public opposition in historic neighborhoods due to concerns about blocking views, casting shadows, and altering city character. Skepticism also exists regarding skyscraper sustainability. While modern high-rises have green features, they rely heavily on energy-intensive systems, and fire safety rules can limit greener materials. Many argue traditional, lower-rise buildings are inherently more sustainable. So, Europe is not building super skyscrapers like other parts of the world, not because it lacks the engineering know-how, but because it often makes a conscious choice not to. It is a complex mix of deeply rooted history, strict regulations protecting cherished views and heritage, and unique engineering and logistical hurdles that make vertical construction exceptionally challenging and costly. If this deep dive into Europe's engineering secrets fascinated you, hit that like button, subscribe for more similar content, leave a comment below with your thoughts, and do not forget to turn on notifications so you do not miss our next video.